Hello and welcome back to Byron's Adventures. Now we're going to be fighting Dearthard here. I actually noticed him on the way back to my territory because of course we do need to deal with the Azurai and uh, I personally feel like they should be pretty likely to listen to any kind of plea that I make. If they don't, then... Well, then things are going to get nasty. Oh yes, things are going to get very nasty indeed. I will try to eliminate them as best as I possibly can. I'm actually thinking I might use my spear as an actual spear going forward as well, because I don't know whether you've noticed, but I can actually do a pretty considerable amount of damage with it. And as you can see, look at that. Wow, massive amounts of damage, even to the horse. I mean, that's, that's perfectly fine with me. I mean, as long as I can do damage to something. And look at that. Look at how much damage that is. That is actually really, really cool. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue using it as kind of a spear instead of a horizontal attacking weapon because you can see here, I can do so much damage with it. Now it might be less likely to kill multiple people unless um, unless they're like super tightly packed like that, for example, but they're only just recruits. So it kind of makes sense in that respect. But otherwise, this is going to be um, kind of a fun thing to do because I haven't really changed the way that I've played Byron for quite some time and it is cool to try out different strategies, especially considering the game gives you access to so many. It just doesn't really make sense for me to, you know, stay with one the entire time because let's face it, variety is of course the spice of life, right? <laughs> Yeah, I guess you can kind of say that. Anyway, um, I'm going to have to be a little bit... Uh, yeah, as you can see. A little bit careful here, because my horse is actually just about to be taken out. So we do have to be a bit careful of that. Maybe I'll get out my bow a little bit, see if I can maybe do some damage with that. Unfortunately, I think I might end up... Yeah, might end up having a bit of a problem here. So let me... See. Oh, did, are you serious? Oh, I got attacked from behind. Did you see that? That was pretty awful. Okay, well, Byron might actually die here i mean not die die but you know he might actually get taken down and uh, i guess i'll just keep my shield up for the most part and um hopefully have one of my uh one of my cavalry units actually help me out here it's kind of amusing that they're not actually um helping me <laughs> oh there we go there's one oh thank you oh wow they got murdered they got murdered like no one's business. That is very, very cool. Anyway, Dirthart's army did actually have a slight numbers advantage. So that might be the uh, the reason why we're losing a couple of people here and there. But for the most part, we really don't have to worry about that too much. Because we have significant power over him. So that's perfectly fine with me. And we did lose seven units. What did we actually lose though? We lost a couple of, well, we lost one Khan's guard. We lost a couple of the Imperial cavalry and then one heavy lancer and a couple of mercenaries. And that's not too, that's not too big a deal. I think that's fine. But the main reason why I wanted to take him prisoner is generally because he is going to be one of the most powerful vassals in the Vlandian arsenal. And being able to remove him from the game world for a little bit of time, at least is going to be quite advantageous for us. Now, unfortunately, I'm only able to take prisoners here, so I will just, again, be looking for cavalry, and that's pretty much it. So I will just take the Vlandian Knights, and I think that's pretty much it. Because, as I have said, I don't really have that much success with converting Tier 5 units or anything above Tier 4, so I'm kind of just being a little bit on the cautious side there because I don't want to reduce my speed so dramatically for a uh, very slim chance of getting those guys. Anyway, I'm going to move myself back to our territory, as I was doing, of course. And, uh, oh yeah, bear in mind that, um, yeah, thank you very much for letting me know that there is actually a setting in Bannerlord Tweaks that does reduce the uh, duration of prisoners being uh, able to escape and things like that. And I actually had that enabled before. I think it's enabled by default. Um, but I was still not having a very good time of things. So I'm not entirely sure uh, what was going on with it, but I don't know. Maybe uh, may maybe it's maybe it's going to do a little bit better nowadays. Who knows? But anyway, um, Onira doesn't seem to be taken yet. Look at this. Onira is actually taking a huge amount of time to be taken. So uh, there's Karath and there's Tassinor. They're running around with pretty significant armies, actually. And I'm kind of surprised that Onira is taking so long to be taken. And there we go. It has finally been taken. Just as I get close. Isn't that always the way of things? Yes, it is. Oh well. 
never mind. Can't really do much about it now. I guess we're just going to have to um, analyze the situation, see what's going on, and then uh, make a, a decision about what we're going to do. So there's Bruce. He's running around with 98 units. He's doing pretty nicely. Very good, sir. He has 84 recruits. <laughs> ah, that's pretty awful, isn't it? Yeah, that is actually terrible. Um, you know, I would love to... Yeah, you know what? If he was close to... Oh, Phikeon is actually relatively close by. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to speak to him real fast. Oh, I'd love to fight these people. I really want to fight as many people as I can get my hands on from the Azurai here, just so that we might have additional bargaining power in our negotiations if we have to make peace relatively soon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take his higher tier units. We'll take a couple of recruits. And then what we'll do is we'll tell him to disband. Which we have to do through our clan menu, of course. So we're going to do that. And hopefully he'll go back to Phikeon. I'm hopeful that he will go there. Bruce's party, disband. Hopefully you'll go, you'll go over to Phikeon. Are you? No, he's going to go to Melion Castle. Ah, oh, that's terrible. That is really, really terrible, Bruce. Why are you doing this? Uh, why are you doing this? Oh, well, never mind. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. So, yeah, we do have another army coming up here as well, Tassinor. This is all for Bruce's own good, by the way. You'll see in, in just a second what I mean by that, because I did place most of my higher tier units that I gained beforehand by just fighting a whole bunch of very high-level armies into Phikeon's uh, garrison, which is what I mentioned in the previous episode. And this is going to be fantastic for him. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go into the garrison here. I have literally huge amounts of Palatine Guards and Imperial Sergeant Crossbowmen and so on and so forth. And th this was basically my insurance policy if I ended up either getting taken prisoner or murdered in some way. This was literally the way that I was going to try and recover from that. So we're just going to place my Imperial recruits in here, place the Imperial Sergeants and so on and so forth. Nothing that I really badly desire or want. And we're going to take about... 30 units each, I think. So let's have another five of those. Let's have a couple of these. 30 units each. And uh, there we go. Another two. There we go. Okay. So that is pretty fantastic. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make him, you know, make him the uh, the leader of his own party. This was the, enti the entire reason I, why I wanted to do this. Because bear in mind that my other parties probably also have pretty terrible... Um, pretty terrible things. Oh, actually, actually, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mm, I, I made a mistake here. I have made a mistake here. Okay, I'm going to have to, well, not speak to him, actually. I didn't really want to speak to him. I wanted to disband his party once again. I made a mistake. So we're just going to get rid of his party. Hopefully he'll go back in there. Yep, there we go. Okay, so he's gone back in there. And what we're going to do first is we're going to take him into our inventory, and we're just literally going to... Oh, I can't select him with the drop-down menu. That's kind of annoying. But otherwise, there you go. Boom. Huge upgrades. Huge upgrades for him. And actually, are there any other people that need upgrades? No, it doesn't seem like it. Okay, so that is exactly what I wanted to do, just to make sure that he had his best gear as he could possibly get for the moment. And we're going to now make his party, and then we'll just give him all of these units. So let's do that. Let's do that a little bit easier. Can I just do this? Yes, I can. Okay, yeah. That's much easier. All right, so there you go. Now he has 121 units, and all of these units are highest tier that he can possibly get. So he is going to be an absolute monster on the battlefield now, and he should be, well, I, I'm going to say maybe almost unstoppable. I'm not entirely sure how, how well he's going to do there, but hopefully he'll do quite nicely for us. Anyway, it seems like Tassinor is actually running over there to see if he can retake Onira, and then, oh... What's going on here with the with the Kuzate? It seems like in every single playthrough I have running at the moment, well, the, the, the two that I have running at the moment, the Kuzate are insane with how, how strong they actually are. We're just going to go and auto-resolve against Godun's party right here because, let's face it, he doesn't deserve our... It doesn't deserve the time of day, thank you. Because this guy has... Uh, I, I think he has left us in the past and we don't really... We don't really desire his attention too much, so thank you very much. Goodbye. I will be taking all of his loot. And we did gain 10,000 from that as well, which is actually very nice. And are, are the Azurai actually at war against the Kuzate? 
Yes, they are. And the Kuzate are attempting to take Onira, which is kind of annoying, to be honest, because Tassinor is right here, and he decided not to take it back, which I got to say is kind of sad, because I very much would have expected him to do so. I really thought that he would go over there and retake it as soon as possible, but it seems like he is deciding to do something completely different, which is kind of strange. I'm not entirely sure why he would have done that, but oh well. Not a big deal. If the Kuzate want to take it, then they can very well do that. I mean, we can't stop them. <laughs> 2,000. 2,000 units. I mean, really. I, I, it feels to me like that is just insane. It's something that definitely could not be stopped through any means whatsoever. I don't think anyone in the game right now, with the maybe exception of... Oh, I was going to say Vlandia, but we've actually dismantled them quite, quite nicely in the previous episode. Um, so maybe not even Vlandia. Maybe not even Vlandia would be able to defeat the Kuzate at the moment. Maybe that's what I should have done. Maybe I should have hedged my bets and um, allied myself or something with the Vlandians. Hmm. That might have uh, that might have might, that might have been a good idea. That might have been a good idea. Well, whatever the case, I'm gonna try and do as much damage as I possibly can. We took out the enemy leader, which is very nice indeed. That means that. That's a significant morale hit for the opponent. Ow! Yeah, I've got to be really careful doing these thrusting attacks because, as we know, enemies on the ground as infantry are significantly more likely to kill a cavalry um, cavalry user in comparison to, you know, the other way around. So we've got to be very, very careful about that. But we're doing nicely. I feel like we're doing quite nicely on uh, on horseback right here. And uh, I actually stood. A, I, I should have started using this much, much earlier, in my opinion. Because while the slashing horizontal attacks are very effective, with something like this, I personally feel like the handling increase that you gain from it being a little bit of a shorter weapon makes all the difference in your timing. And it really makes a massive amount of, of change, basically, in how you play as well. So I very much appreciate the ability to do that. Otherwise, uh, nothing really for us here. I'll take some Imperial Crossbowmen, even though... Ah, do I really want to do that? That's kind of a waste of space, in my opinion. Because while it's very cool to take those guys, if I decide to take them into my army uh, you know, entirely, then it's going to slow us down a little bit, maybe. I mean, we all, we have a huge amount of horses, so maybe it won't actually slow us down. Because let's actually have a look. Mm, yeah, we're losing a little bit of a little bit of speed from herd, but high morale is giving us a little bit of extra speed as well. Ah, I have spotted the fellow that actually wanted to uh, that actually wanted to um, well led the the siege against Onira. Now we have another another clan that has left us, and. Uh, well, I, I guess it is to be expected, isn't it? It is completely to be expected because, well, as I've said before, we don't have any fiefs to give them. That's actually something to bear in mind. I um, have not yet found a way to really provide fiefs to them um, because I was a bit worried about the, as I've said before, adding any additional mods that might significantly change the way that the game works um, because that might cause some incompatibility problems um, going forward. So I haven't installed it yet, but I might decide to do it for the next episode or something like that. But we'll see. We'll see what happens with it. Anyway, I'm going to try and track this guy down. Maybe what I can do, I think, does he have... Uh, yeah, look at this. He actually owns the Nusica. So if we can, I'd like to be able to persuade him to join us. Okay, here we go, here we go. Yes, 94%. Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. 94% chance. Give me that. And then 91% chance. Then we're going to have the obligatory 60% chance. Oh, no, no, no. Look at that. Yeah, straight forward sailing. Oh, yeah. That is very nice indeed. Okay, so now we are going to, of course, have the ability to persuade him. He has a massive amount of... Are you serious? <laughs> Uh, do I really need that much money to be able to do that? Apparently I do. As you can see, this doesn't do anything either. Okay. 
I guess he's not really willing to uh, do anything in regards to bargaining or bartering or whatever we want to call it at this point. And uh, that's kind of sad. That's kind of sad. It feels to me like at this point, you almost require the trade skill that allows you to trade fiefs and things like that. Because if you can't trade fiefs with your opponent to try and persuade them, and the money that you have, which is significant at this point, is not enough, then I'm not entirely sure how to really go about that. Because obviously if he's not willing to be persuaded, then I guess that's just what we're going to have to deal with, you know? We, we, we just can't do it. So it's very, very uh, strange to me to, to not have the you know, dip diplomatic, you know, sort of persuasion ability to really do anything. And uh, I feel like charm skill should do more than that. I mean, obviously the charm skill is already giving me the opportunity to do it, so maybe I'm just complaining for nothing. That's probably it. Yeah, don't worry about me, you know, don't worry about the ramblings of an insane individual such as us. Yes, such as us. See, look at that. I'm speaking about myself like like we're we are a separate entity, you know, like there's like multiple people. Yeah, that's that's exactly you know, we we don't wanna we don't wanna get into that, that's for sure. We <laughs> again, uh yes, but again. Inane ramblings. Inane ramblings. Okay. I'm just gonna stop now. And uh, poke a couple of people. Let's poke them. There we go. Poke them. Wow. That's actually doing a huge amount of damage. I mean, obviously, piercing damage does do more damage most of the time. Anyway, it's going to penetrate their armor quite nicely. And there it is. Easy victory. Easy victory. So I think what I'm going to do now, now that I have a couple of these people, and look at that. Wow, we just gained 10,000 from this guy because, of course, we saw that he had over 1 million in his, uh, in his coffers. But, uh, yeah, 10,000 is... Not exactly great at this time in the game, because this is pretty much late game right now in this current playthrough. And gaining 10,000 from one vassal who has over a million gold? I personally don't think that that is that good. I feel like maybe what should happen is later on, so I think the amount that you get from ransoms and the amount that you get from defeating vassals should be determined by a variable of how many days that you've currently played. Because as far as I'm aware, Byron's current save and how many days he's currently played is over a thousand. He's played for over a thousand days. And I would assume that what that should do is that should multiply the amount that you get by a certain, certain amount. Because obviously, if you don't have that, then you're just going to get the flat value of 10,000. And yet, yeah, 10,000 is great and everything, but I have 1.38 million and it doesn't really do anything. So, maybe something to think about for the future, but who knows. Anyway, I am going to be making peace with these guys. And yeah, he's... Oh, look at that. Super cheap. Super cheap, super cheap. Okay, yeah, this is this is perfect. Absolutely perfect. I think it's 46. Yeah, can I? There we go, 46. And we will be making peace with him. There you go. And a bunch of people are going to be released because of the peace declaration and everything, but that's absolutely fine because we do gain some charm skill, which we don't need, but we also gain some relation with some people as well, which is also fine. Um, but at least we don't have to worry about the Azurai any further and we can concentrate our efforts more on the Vlandians, which is exactly what we wanted to do in the first place. So now I can go back and we can start fighting against the Vlandians once more. And uh, <laughs> uh, it's, getting, it's getting difficult, got to say that. It is getting difficult. Okay, so Saniopa, mm, we should probably call for an army, shouldn't we? I think that's probably going to be the thing that we'll have to do. And I will make a brief stop over at Fikeon as well, because Fikeon is, is obviously currently having a huge amount of units for me to use. And I'm going to call for Bruce, Miron, Incurion, Calatild, and Karath. And they will all come and join me, hopefully. And we will make... Uh, where, where, where? There's Fikeon. I'm actually going a bit too far away from it. So let's go up there. I do have enough... Yeah, I have 82 days. That's surely enough. Uh, Donustiker is now being besieged by the Kuzate. Now, here's the thing. The Kuzate are snowballing pretty heavily at this point, and I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to do to defeat them, I guess. 
just once again, skirmishes, try and eliminate as many of their vassals as we possibly can, and then just go on from there. I think that's probably the only way that we can really make it work. We have a lot of level ups to do here as well. Well, we did, but obviously I had a war horse, so that was the main reason. So what we're going to do now is I'm literally just going to click and drag all these guys in here. This is my insurance policy, as I stated beforehand. So it's not very good for me to take all of these right now. But we're going to take them for the sheer fact that I need the numbers. I need a huge amount of numbers here. Otherwise, if we don't have the numbers, we might as well just say goodbye and give up. So let's do this. There we go. Let's get a bunch of these, a bunch of these. And there we are. Okay, so I have 400 and... Wow. Over 450 units right now. And I don't want to open my stash, thank you very much. But I would like to go into the trade screen because I do have a number of pieces of gear that I would like to sell. 22,000, 35,000, there's 29,000 remaining. Don't think I'm going to be able to do anything with that. I think I'm probably going to bankrupt the town way too easily at that point. So now what we're going to do is we will head on over to Saniopa, I think is probably our best bet, even though there's 1,600. Are you serious right now? Look at this. 1,600, 950 militia? Ah. Uh, gotta say, I feel like that is way too many. That is way too many in a garrison. One garrison should not have that much, but maybe that's just me. Uh, oh well, never mind, never mind. Maybe you think it's balanced, I'm not sure. If you think it's balanced, then good for you. Oh wow, look at that. We just gained almost 10,000 from Aldrich being ransomed, which I gotta say is not exactly great. Would have liked quite a bit more, considering Aldrich is one of the richest vassals that Vlandia has under their banner. So it would have been nice to gain a little bit more from that, but okay, eh, you know, can't say anything about it. And we are going to be gaining the last guy to come into our army here, Kalatild, is going to be joining us. And then, are these guys literally, are they, are they literally reinforcing this garrison because they know we're coming here already? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, they, they're actually coming out now. Okay. Yeah, you can you can leave, sir. This guy's only got 73. It's not like it really makes a difference, does it? Okay, so let's go in. And they're going to sally out, aren't they? I feel like they're going to sally out really, really fast. I guess we'll see. All right, so here we go. This is the problem that we are going to be facing right now. As you can see, the enemy has over 2,600 units against R1000. And I can only hope that our vassals have actually done a reasonable job in recruiting as many units as they possibly can get their hands on. Otherwise, this is going to be a very easy battle for our opponent, and that is definitely something that we do not want. No, especially considering the Vlandians have now appeared with such a dramatically large army. Unfortunately, they did get the garrison to sally out. That was the main problem here. If they attacked without the garrison, I think we would probably have a pretty decent chance of achieving victory here without really suffering that many casualties. But unfortunately, that's not the case here. We're going to have to deal with a lot of enemies coming in, and especially considering the uh, militia aren't actually that bad. They're not, they, are, they aren't bad at all. They're, they're pretty decent units. Um, and especially considering they're in a sort of critical mass here, it is going to make things even more difficult. So I'm just going to tell my cavalry and my horse archers to charge in because that's what they do. And let's see if I can maybe shoot that guy a little bit as well. But yeah, this is going to be very, very problematic. As you can see, there's a huge amount of archers here as well. And I'm not entirely sure what I can really do here. Because um, the one hand, it seems like we're actually winning in terms of the amount of damage that we're able to deal so far. Oh, the charge. Wow, did you see that? That was actually crazy. Okay, yeah, that was that was really, really crazy. Massive amount of damage right there. And I think, you know, I, I think we might actually have a decent shot. I'm actually kind of surprised. I wouldn't have expected this. Oh dear. 
This is bad. Bad news bears, get out of there. There we go. Okay, not too bad. And maybe I can, oh yeah, just avoid those spearmen. Come on now, Byron, avoid those spearmen. We do not want them, thank you. And yeah, look at that. We actually prevailed against their initial infantry charge. I gotta say, I'm very surprised. Thought we were going to have huge, huge diff difficulties with them. And uh, I think I'm, yeah, I think I'm gonna lose my horse relatively soon, which is definitely something we don't really want at this point. So I'm gonna just stay a little bit back here. Try and do some damage with my bow. Do have a number of uh, arrows still remaining. And I think what we want to do now is actually move forward. We're going to move forward with all of our forces. Let's try and take out this guy if we can. We want to make sure that uh, most of the enemy's cavalry is killed. Because otherwise... Oh, there we go. That's a lord. Take that, Mr. Lord. Yeah, we got to get this guy dead as well. Yeah, I can't do much damage to you when you're that close to me, sir. Which is obvious. So let me see if I can... Oh, he just ran into the tree. He's dead now, surely. He didn't? I'm really surprised about that. Oh, wow. Okay, I thought to myself, yeah, if I ran into a tree like that, I'd be dead. You know, that's that's exactly what would happen to me, for sure. But, uh, no, not in his case. Not in his case. Okay. So now here's the thing. I have to be very careful about staying alive, because if worst comes to worst, and I actually do get eliminated, then we're going to have huge problems dealing with... The rest of the enemies so should i just charge i think i should just charge i think i should just charge let's let's move our archers up let's be aggressive let's be really really aggressive here because it seems as though to me most of the enemies are literally just archers now okay i gotta be careful here don't get killed byron don't get killed byron oh look at this they're all running away this is fantastic try and eliminate as many of these militia as we can get our hands on because otherwise they're going to return into the garrison and still make it just as difficult to take as before so yeah that's something we definitely want to accomplish as much as possible wow what a what a significant battle this is absolutely huge uh let's get our uh, let's get our archers to move up a little bit more now we are losing quite a few units in this endeavor of course i mean that is to be expected but i'm hopeful that we will not lose them in vain and they will actually be uh used adequately enough so that we don't have to fight against such an overwhelming opponent going forward wow still so many oh dear <laughs> i'm dead I'm dead. There's nothing I can do about this. I'm surrounded. Uh, I could, yeah, I mean, I wish I had some kind of roar attack, you know, to kind of fear them away because we're such a legendary warrior, but we don't have that at the moment. Uh, it seems like they're staying in formation. That is a mistake, fellows. That is a huge mistake to allow Byron to live. Do I still have, do I still have ammunition? I might not have ammunition anymore, and that is the, that is the primary reason why we're losing so many units at the moment. Uh, yeah. We are still in a bad, bad way. You know what? Uh, don't die, Byron. Don't die. Can I retreat? Yes, I can. Okay, let's retreat. And then we'll go back in. If we can. Oh, we can't. Okay, we'll just have to send the troops and see what happens. Oh, so far it's actually working. It's working. Look at this. It is actually working. I can't believe it. Yeah, it's because Byron was way too injured. He was way too injured to go in there. And look at that. We have achieved victory against quite possibly one of the largest armies that we have ever fought. And that is amazing. And, and look at that. That's exactly what I mean. The gold reward for that battle of over 2,600 units is 19,000. Yeah, a little bit too low for, for my liking because let's face it, if I have to literally uh, spend like, I don't know, 2 million gold to try and persuade some guy to join me, then I'd like to get a you know pretty significant amount of gold to reflect that. You know what I mean? So it's not like... It's kind of like throwing a 
a pebble in the ocean and being like, oh yeah, I caused a ripple. Yeah, very good. Anyway, there you go. We are able to take a huge amount of them. Actually, not, a, not even a huge amount of them prisoner. I'm actually kind of surprised that there weren't that many vassals there, but okay. Okay, so let's take a quick look here. I want to make sure that I am taking the mounted units as much as possible. I don't really want to take anything else apart from mounted units for my prisoners at this point. Uh, I don't really see any tier 4 or lower at the moment, which is actually kind of weird. Yeah, there's one, but it's a caravan guard. Didn't really want to take a caravan guard if at all possible. I suppose I could take the Sturgeon Brigand, which is also not exactly... Uh, not exactly something I would like. 639 prisoners. I mean, I could take them all and then sell them. Um, but I don't know how... I don't know how much that's really gonna... Shall I just do that? I have no idea. Okay, let's do it. Why not? <laughs> that's gonna be absolutely... Uh, that's gonna be a huge mistake, I feel. Maybe. Because let's have a look. How many do they have in, in here anymore? Can we tell? I don't know why I can't tell. Why, why don't they give me a... I have to continue the siege, I suppose. Oh, wow, look at that. Okay, there's no one left. I actually thought they might have some people still left in here, but they don't. So that is hilarious. So, okay, so let's go in to Saniopa here. And... <laughs> okay. Uh, this is going to be kind of hilarious. All right, so I'm going to choose prisoners to be ransomed. I'm just going to sell them all because I don't really need the influence either. I have almost 5,000 influence right now. So this is going to be pretty funny. So let's just do this. There we go. Let's do do all of this. Do all of this. Technically what I could... Uh, I, could oh, I could actually do that with improved garrisons actually. You know what? I'm going to do that with improved garrisons where we're actually able to recruit prisoners over time. That seems like a, a thing that could be quite advantageous for us. So let's recruit, as you can see, recruit prisoners over time. Let's do that. Recruit prisoners over the threshold. What does that mean? Should the garrison recruit prisoners even if the recruitment limit is reached? The garrison will not recruit above its size. Sure, I don't know what that means. But we're going to do 250 here or 300. I think 300 is probably better for a town. But uh, yeah, I mean, generally what I'm trying to do here is make it so that this mod is not super overpowered for us because you can make it super overpowered if you want to you know i mean obviously you know you can quite clearly see that it could be overpowered if you wanted it to be but obviously as we're dealing with enemy garrisons of over 1800 i feel like if the ai is doing that then i should also utilize the same methods but i don't really i don't really want to do that so we're just going to do Garrison training? No, I don't even need to do garrison training, do I? Let's uh, let's make them tier 4 units. Train troops. And there we go. And we're then we're also going to... I don't think I need to do anything else, actually. So we're just going to go to the dungeon. Manage the prisoners. There's actually a few in here, as you can see. And I can actually take these out. I think I will take them out. Just so that I can utilize them, potentially, in what we need to do. And hopefully... Because of the Improved Garrisons mod, we should be able to get most of these recruited into our garrison. And that will help us quite a bit. Now, bear in mind that obviously if I didn't have the money to be able to sustain these guys, then it would obviously not be worth it. Can I... Oh, I can't put any more? Okay, apparently I can't put any more. That is actually hilarious. Okay, so they're just going to do that. And we will be selling the rest i suppose so let's choose the prisoners and then we'll just i've got a huge amount of level ups as well to be able to do as well that's really nice and let's just sell all of these how much money do you think we're gonna make probably not much uh yeah that's that's pretty much it yeah 5400 from 147 prisoners that's actually kind of insane oh, i do gain a little bit uh, a couple of points in roguery that's always nice and otherwise, I think that's pretty much it. Now, I am going to be choosing who the owner is. Um, we're going to make Tassinor the owner, I think. Tassinor is someone that doesn't have anything, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, he doesn't have anything. And Incurion, I don't believe, has anything either. Yeah, he doesn't. So it really depends on who we want to choose. I think Tassinor has been running around and doing quite a good job. So I'm going to give that to him. 
and just watch him leave now. Watch him leave and go to Vlandia or something like that. I can 100% think that he's probably going to end up doing that. But anyway, I'm going to end the army. I'm going to disband the army right now so that everyone can go off and do whatever they want to do. They can get their, their, uh, their units back and everything. And there we have it. All right, so we actually took Saniopa, if you can believe it. Pretty crazy, right? Yeah, pretty crazy to be able to do that, considering the enormous garrison that they had in there. Anyway, that will be it for this episode, as Achios decides to come along with 925 units. Wow, that's pretty impressive. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.